Welcome back to this tutorial series on using Custom Cabinet Estimator. This video tutorial will be the last of the three tutorials on creating a job in Custom Cabinet Estimator. In our first of this three tutorial series, we went to a job, and then we went into a job, and we covered this Job Info and Client Info tab. So we went through all of the information here about markups and delivery and taxes and all of that, and then we went to this client info tab and covered all of this information about clients, the billing and shipping address and the ability to relook up and actually jump to the client record. Then we got into the rooms tab and it's up to you how you go about this, but some people will actually add all of their rooms, hit add room and then name the room and then come back and add another room and add their kitchen and bath and laundry and master bath and then come back and actually do the material entry portion. That's not how I did it. I always add a room and finish the room before I add the next room. And I do try to add these in some sort of logical order and with some sort of hierarchy to that where the kitchen is kind of the primary room of the house and then maybe the things that are similar or close by, a wet bar or a butler's pantry or pantry and then laundry room master bath peripheral baths basement baths upstairs baths all of those smaller less significant rooms are added later in the process and if I have five baths I try to have a bath one bath two bath three bath four bath five but however you go about this is up to you what you name them is up to you the elevation name is up to you but once you do that so we're gonna add a new room now we've talked about duplicating a room we're gonna add a new room now and we need to give the room a name. So we're going to call this Castle Dungeon 3. And as far as an elevation goes, you know, you've got your pull down of what, and you can add anything you want here is permanent. So this could be upstairs left. Or obviously, if it's a dungeon, it would be downstairs. <laughs> But, you know, whatever makes sense to you or the elevation number off the drawing. So let's go ahead and add this room. And this is the first time, other than for just a brief few seconds in one of the videos we showed this, and I spoke to this, that all of the fields that have a financial implication, a field that money is involved, is the color of money. They're green. So all of these fields are green. All of these fields are green. Now, these are not, these source fields are not green but they do have a financial implication as far as the actual cost calculation but in and of themselves they do not and so but these like these profiles these profiles have no financial implication there's no cost associated to the profiles the cost is associated to the door if you actually have a profile that has a cost associated to it currently your only avenue to a charge for that would be to go to the accessories database and say I have 32 doors and they have an edge profile that has a cost associated to it. But very, very few edge profiles or panel profiles or framing profiles have a cost associated to them. They're part of the door or they're one of the many options that have no cost implications. Same thing with finish process. The stain and paint color or glaze color doesn't have a financial implication. The process, and so if you choose a stain, and the glaze, then your process should reflect that it was a stain in a glaze because that's where the cost is. So when we talked briefly from the default setup up here about setting up these defaults that are actually pulled from here. So here's our default materials. If we come in here, we have all of our default materials and this list can be as long as you want. You can add as many items as you want. But for this particular job, we're gonna choose this TW10 hard maple wiping stain hand glaze. And I'm gonna show you in a second an air table base that I use to kind of keep track of all these things as I'm, you know, when I was doing the cabinet business, when I would meet with clients, I used Asana for many years, but I've come to the conclusion that Airtable is a better solution for many things. I still use Asana a lot for to-do list type things where I have a list and a checkbox. But for something like this, where I'm trying to collect the decisions that clients make, in way back when I used forms, handwritten forms. So I had forms in a drawer in the showroom. I would meet with a client and I would write on those forms the selections that they made. Then I went to Asana and then now I would use Airtable if I were still in the cabinet business today. Let's choose this material selection set, TW10. So that's a thin wood or insert panel door. Actually, I think I'm going to choose the CRP10 hard maple with a wiping stain and a hand glaze. So I'm gonna show you how I would do this if it were a higher end job. So instead of using a thin wood door, I use a solid wood door that when it closes, it doesn't have that tinny sound of that, but reverse the panel. So we'll choose that. 
And when it comes in, it's not going to have those selections that I want. But look at all the answers that I answered by answering that one question. All of these were filled in for the interior parts. And all of these were filled in for the exterior parts. So the philosophy here that you're looking at for this interface is that we're going to be working from left to right. So you see here we have materials, cabinets, panels, fillers, tow board, hardware, accessories, trim molding, and labor rates. So we're working left to right, and then we're working top to bottom as well. So on the materials, we come down from the top down to this tab here, exterior parts. And then before we leave here, we're going to want to hit the interior parts, make sure we get all of those. And this is all about trying to separate and protect real estate. Some people don't have as big a screen as others, so we're trying to keep the screen as unpopulated as possible. That's why we separate these two. But just remember that you need to continue to work from left to right. And so once we finish this one, we would go to this one and do the same thing. And it'll have three tabs or four tabs itself. Base cabinets, upper cabinets, tall cabinets, and vanity cabinets. So back at this material one, we're working top to bottom now. And then again, left to right. So we've answered all of these questions. Now some of these are not actual answers like here edge banding need selection because we've got generic answers to these paint and glaze colors we haven't actually picked a color yet at the estimate stage that might be appropriate we want to price a wiping stain with a hand glaze but we don't know what color wiping stain we don't know what color glaze yet and so this is all still going to price it right but once we learn what this and this is then we can answer this I and mean, we may have a different selection for say this crown mold maybe we're going to use this 1524 Cove hard maple instead of that B10. And then maybe here we're going to use a concealed light rail that is hard maple because we're doing the shaker style. And then for these doors we've got hard maple material but an embead panel. An embead panel is not appropriate for a shaker style door. So we would come in here to the embead and choose reverse G Cove. And then you see that it only answered the first question. For base doors it did not change any of the others but I can choose same profile now I do need to take a peek at this because it's going to change that too when I say same profile it's going to copy them all and that's not correct for a drawer front I need that PO57 is the same thing for a drawer front and then on the outside edge I like that that LO34 is the 16th radius front and back of the door so that works good for a shaker style door this elite profile for the frame is not appropriate we want a square profile and then again we can copy that down if we know what our stain color is let's say it happens to be ginger then we can go ahead and choose that and that not only copies all the way down through here but it also copies to this second page as well for the things that are appropriate. So let's say we also know what the glaze color is and it's brown. Same glaze. And again that's copies to both pages. So we've answered all of those questions very quickly by answering this and then just filling in the things that are different. So now we would continue to work from left to right. So we would go to cabinets and here we have this question add base cabinets and we get a pop-up when we click on that button. And you really need to read through this at least a few times till you get comfortable with it. A lot of times I see people enter like three foot here or two and a half feet, something like that, and then come down here and add a cabinet, then come back and add three foot and add another cabinet. And that's not what we're asking you here. We're asking you for the total base cabinet linear footage for this room. So I'm going to show you real quick what I use to collect or what I would use if I were still in the cabinet business to collect this information from clients. And again, I was doing this in a sauna the last few years of my business. And then I learned about Airtable, started mastering Airtable. And what I love about Airtable is that it has formulas. But So let's come in here. We've come into a job called Princess Bride Enterprises Dread Pirate Roberts. So this is the supposed builder. This is the supposed customer of the builder. And as you scroll down here, you see that we've got, this is an estimate. We're producing an estimate. Next thing we need to do is schedule an estimate meeting. And our builder is the Princess Bride Enterprises. Our client is Dread Pirate Roberts. These are all from these selections up here. So if I click on this, I could add another client if I needed to. Then we have a category. This happens to be a residential castle remodel. And then we have our selection. So I've only done this one room. But if you had multiple rooms, there would be multiple rooms listed here. In this actual job we have in Custom Cabinet Estimator, there's already two rooms. But I'm just mocking this up. So this only has this one room. So when I met with a customer, I could do this on my iPhone, have this same exact interface up on my phone, and come down here and say, okay, what wood species do you want to build these cabinets out of? And, and I just have a pull-down list here of all the species that are available. And so in this case, they've chosen cherry and this CRP10 square raised panel door, the same drawer front. They're going to use a dovetail drawer box. 
here's my stain color, here's my glaze color. So actually I've already chosen the wrong glaze color. I kind of was doing that, making it up as I went, but we can correct that. Then we have our sheen and our crown mold and our light. So all the things that we were doing, we this is where we would, in the showroom, ask the customer what it is you want. And then that's where we would pull this from, is from this particular program. This has everything about this job. And we'll look at it in more depth, probably in other videos later on, but this, program makes it really easy to keep track of this stuff. So actually I'm going to bring that back up because I need this now for what I'm about to do. So now I'm looking at this estimate. So up here we were looking at the selections and let's correct those real quick while we're thinking about it. So I'm going to cancel that and go back here to this material entry and say it's a sable glaze. So that fixed all of that. Now that I know this is ginger and sable, of course, I've probably picked something that may not have a, an actual selection in here. There's ginger, and there's not a ginger with a sable glaze, but I'll just choose this. But if you know, you've know you got an edge band that matches it, you would use that or find one that matches it and add it and enter that. So I've got all the things now matching what is in Airtable. Then when I come to the cabinets, I come back to that and I come down here to my estimate. And so this part of the program is really strong in my opinion. So as a matter of fact, I'm gonna look at this in a different way. So I'm tapping into this estimate portion by going to the project, but let's look at the estimate tab because then we can see the whole thing. And we're looking at it for this job. And now we're just looking at that estimate portion of it. And when you look at it in this format, you're scrolling up and down to look at all the data. And in this interface, you're looking left to right. So what this allows me to do, and I would call this, instead of an estimate, I would call this a ballpark estimate. And usually when customers ask me for a ballpark estimate, I would say something to try to kind of lighten the mood of, well, a ballpark costs 20 or $30 million. But ballpark estimates are not a bad thing, but you can't spend a lot of time on them. So what this does is it's taking from this rate base here, I've got my lowest, cheapest cabinet would be $650 a cabinet based off past experience is how I would do this. So what I kept track of in my cabinet business for 23 years, literally, was how many cabinets did I build for each project and what did I sell that project for? And I kept that in a calendar based format for many, many, many years. And at the end of the year, I would go back and find out what was the least expensive job I did per cabinet, what was the most expensive job I did per cabinet, and then what were all the jobs, including the least expensive and the most expensive, divided by that total number of cabinets. So the average cost, and these are just made up numbers, so don't try to use these for anything. And you definitely could find a less expensive than $650 option as far as if you had a white melamine interior on a frameless cabinet with a grass zargon system drawer and used decorative laminate veneer doors and decorative laminate veneer moldings and limited the moldings that they had and limited the accessories, you could probably sell a job for less than this $650 per cabinet. But this is used to create that ballpark estimate. So it'd come back to the estimate and just enter a estimated quantity of cabinets. So for this one, we had an estimated quantity of cabinets of 19. Let's say now, obviously we would have more cabinets than that in a whole project. If it was a house full of cabinets, but in a smaller project, that might be the case. So let's say we have this 19 cabinets, then at $650 a cabinet, our ballpark estimate is 12,350. Our mid-priced ballpark estimate is 16,150. And then our high price ballpark estimate, everything you might want would be 28,500 for only 19 cabinets. What I also keep track of here is as I continue to gather information is what the linear footage of each of the rooms are. So what I'm looking for to be able to enter into the custom cabinet estimator, a base linear foot, total footage, and then finished. So this is base finished linear footage and then upper, upper finished, tall, tall finished vanity. So I'm seeing I need 19 feet for this base linear footage. So we'll come back here, click on the base, say we've got 19 feet and we don't have any finished interior base cabinets and then I just need to add my cabinet types and so you may or may not know this if you don't know at the estimate stage so at a ballpark estimate doesn't matter what the cabinet types are we just gave them those three numbers now the three numbers has relevance to me almost all of us are conditioned throughout our life to get three estimates on anything but no one ever said you got to get three estimates for three different people. Now, you may presume that, and people may even think that, but if you give them three estimates, subconsciously they're thinking, hey, I've gotten my three estimates. What I found, if I gave people the estimate they asked for, if they came in and they made their selections, they said, I want that door, I want that wood species, I want that edge profile, I want that panel profile, made all their selections and finished selections and all of that, and we gave them an estimate, and that's all we gave them. If they couldn't afford it, they wouldn't come back to me and say, okay, I can't afford that. Do you have any other options? They would just go somewhere else thinking of, okay, I can't afford that. So select other things. 
They never gave me the opportunity to rebid the job in a lower price product category. And so by giving them all three prices, I had people that would have gone away and never come back stay and say, oh, but I can't afford this other price you offered me. And then other people say, oh, the best of the best is only that much more or at least upgrade somewhere in the middle. So a lot of upgrades came from giving them that high price and a lot of people that I might have not captured had I not given them the three price. Now they still might get three bids from three different people, but a lot of people will feel like they've done their due diligence. I've gotten three estimates and I'm choosing one of these three estimates, so I've done my job. So I've collected this linear footage in there to add these cabinets. And now if I had a set of blueprints in front of me, I'd be able to look at that and say, or even a sketch, something, say, well, the kitchen has to have a sink cabinet. So I'd come down here and find my false front over pair of doors and choose that, add that to the job. And almost every job is gonna have a three drawer stack. So I'd come down and find my three drawer stack, add that. And then most jobs are going to have some combination, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because this is going to be the longest video I've made. I want to try to do this fairly quickly. Probably the most popular cabinet in the kitchen would be the drawer repair doors. So we're going to pick that, and we're going to go ahead and say that that cabinet, that we have four of them, and then we're going to come back and say we want a drawer over a single. Add that and say we've got three of those. And you see that when you come out of there, we default to the quantity field. So all you got to do is type that quantity in. And what you see here is that Custom Cabinet Estimator has estimated the width. It's not an estimate, it's an actual number. But if we go back here and look, we have this suggested footage. And this is a good thing to pay attention to. You see here that we have a suggested average linear foot. So for a kitchen, the average cabinet is 2.21 feet wide. And what it's saying here is we suggest, based off of you saying there's 19 linear feet, that you probably should have nine cabinets. And I actually do have nine cabinets. If I have 20 cabinets, I know I've done something wrong. And if I have three cabinets, I know I've done something wrong. And if you're building face frame cabinets, even if they're ganged or joined cabinets, still think of them as the individual units. So if you've got a sink cabinet that is combined or joined with a three drawer stack, add a three drawer stack and add a sink cabinet. That's how we do it here to keep track. So we've got all our cabinets in. We've added this linear footage and added the cabinets one at a time. Now a couple of little features here that we haven't gone over in previous videos. We have this default height that came from the job info page, but you can change it for a cabinet or you can just change it once you've dropped it. We can also change what we're filtering. So right now we're filtering out all the face frame cabinets. They would be like base hyphen FF, but we're filtering them out and choosing just full access. If we switched this, then all we would see in this list are face frame cabinets. So you can use this filter so you're only seeing what you want to see. And then if you want to search for a cabinet, if you're not seeing it in the list and you know what the name is, you can just type it in here. And this has the look forward feature. As you type, you'll see the things you're looking for. And then once you've chosen that cabinet, you can come down here and add the cabinet. Also, we have this preferred list. So if a cabinet is like something you use a lot, see the three drawer stack, I would have to scroll down to it. But if I want it to be at the top of the list, if I make it a preferred cabinet, now it's at the very top of the list. They're not just sorted alphabetically only. I've got my preferred cabinet at the top of the list. So I might do that with the sink cabinet, the three drawer stack, and the drawer of repair doors, and a drawer of a single since those are the most popular. Now they're always at the top of the list. And any others that you find to be very popular for yourself, you can do that. So those are some features that have been added in this version 7 of Custom Cabinet Estimator. So that covers our base cabinets. And now we're going to go to the upper cabinets. We'll pop back to Airtable and we see that we have 16.3 feet of upper cabinets. So, and I know just for the sake of being able to illustrate this, that I'm going to go ahead and add additional, let's say three feet in one cabinet, just for the sake of us being able to have something in here. And so for these upper cabinets, your most obvious cabinet is your upper pair. That's the one that is the most popular. So let's go ahead and throw that up at the top of the list. And then probably upper pair short, like over a cooktop or something like that. And then you always have a refrigerator, single over a built-in refrigerator. And then we have a, have a pair over a refrigerator. There it is. That's probably really popular. Just moving those to the top, showing you how that works. And so let's just go ahead and do this. Let's say we've got an upper pair short. I'm just going to make it up as I go here. Let's say we got one of those. And then we've got upper pair, most popular cabinet. Let's say we've got three of those. And then upper single. I don't think I added that one yet, I haven't. So I'm gonna scroll down to the upper single, go ahead and add it to the top and then add it here. See, I've got two of those. And then we'll say we got one that's over a refrigerator, pair over a refrigerator. 
And then because we added that three linear feet of finished, we need a finished cabinet. So let's come up here to the cabinets and choose an open cabinet. And so that one's gonna have a finished interior when we add it. So we'll choose that. And you see here that the interior, you could change it. If you happen to have an open cabinet that's gonna use a melamine or a pre-finished plywood, you can just change it right here to unfinished. But this is our three foot, and you see that it actually added three feet for that cabinet, 36 inches, because here we said we had three feet. Now if we added another cabinet, they'd each be one and a half feet or 18 inches each. So now we've got our upper cabinets. When we look at this unit here, we see we've got 16.3 feet. We have a suggested quantity of eight cabinets. We have seven, so that just means our cabinets are a little wider then the average of 1.92 and then we have a three foot suggested quantity of two because of the 1.92 feet but in reality we just have a really wide open cabinet so it's just that double check something to keep you from making a mistake then let's go ahead and do our tall cabinets and we'll jump back into our air table and we see that we got 4.5 feet linear feet of tall cabinet and they're all unfinished and we're going to choose and again you could add these to your preferred list and they'd be at the top of your list from that point forward so i want a four-door pantry right here so two pair four-door pantry on one of those and then i want an oven box so we're looking for a pair over a micro over an oven over a single drawer right here so that gives us those cabinets. And again, if we pop back in here and look at this, this says we have 4.5 feet, so we should probably have two cabinets, and we do. And then we don't have any vanity cabinets in this kitchen. Now, we've gone through these four left to right, so it's time to go back up. And we're on cabinets, so we wanna to go to panels. And I'm just gonna make this up. So let's say we have in this kitchen, let's say we've got a, a panelized base panel somewhere in the kitchen and maybe we've got a base slab end, a couple of those on either side of something. And I am just totally making this up. And maybe our tall cabinets, maybe one of them has a slab panel on it. And yeah, maybe the other is gonna have a filler. And for upper cabinets, let's go ahead and add two panelized. So these would be like race panel or insert panel units. And maybe a couple of slabs on either side of the cooktop, that short cabinet we added. So upper slab. And we'll add two of those. And then let's say we don't have any appliance panels, but you can see here, if we see this, we've got all kinds of appliance panels in this list for built-in refrigerators and dishwashers and ice makers and bar refrigerators, trash compactors, warming drawers, all of those kind of things are here. And then our wainscot panels, and we don't have an island or peninsula, so we're not gonna add them, but if you came in here and did, just for the sake of showing you how that works, I'm gonna go ahead and add one at cabinet height. So you've got just a general, no default sizes, and then one that has a default height of cabinet height, and then one that has a raised 40 and a half inch bar height. Let's just choose one of these so you see how it works, and I'll delete it. And so let's say we have one and the quantity of panels is four and we'll say the panel width is 60 inches. And if you wanted to enter it in feet, you could put five and then change this to feet. And then there's our height. But again, we could change it. We used this one that is cabinet height, so it defaulted to 34 and a half, but we could change it to 40 and a half without deleting and starting over again. And then it's gonna calculate the square foot for this panel. And so these panels can be used for die walls and wainscot walls and whatever you need to use them for. But I'm gonna delete it because we don't have one in here and then fillers and tow board. So let's say for fillers, we'll just make up a few things. Most of my fillers are inch and a half other than if I have a blind corner unit. So I'm gonna add a base filler. I'm gonna add a tall filler because I didn't have two applied ends. And then let's add a, an upper filler and say there's two of those somewhere. And then tow board. So in, from here on, hardware and fillers and trim and molding, we've got some suggested things. So we're saying, based on what you told us, 19 linear feet of cabinets and you got so many finished ends, we have a suggested quantity here. So if we add, choose our tow board, and you can have a dozen of these if you need, but I've got a four and a quarter height, a four inch height, and a five inch height. But whatever works for you, and even this, when I add it, I could change the height of this one from four and a quarter to something else if I wanted to. But now that I've added a height, it's saying based on the linear footage of cabinetry you added and the number of finished ends you added, you should probably have four pieces of tow board. Now, you may decide you want to add five every time. You may use tow board for other things and add more, but based on the linear footage, we need four pieces of tow board. And that's just a suggestion, and it's a pretty accurate suggestion. 
suggest. And then on the hardware, this is pretty cool. Now we've made our material selections back here, but we do have to choose if we want to be able to use this as standard hardware where it fills all of this in at once based on a criteria set. We need to answer these questions over here. If we don't, then we can just come in here and start adding one thing at a time, doorknobs, doorknobs, functional hardware. But I like to use these default sets. So we've created these default sets here in the default setup area. And because I know I've used a dovetail drawer, I'm going to use an undermount slide with a $5 per knob budget at the estimate stage. I don't know what knob they're going to use or pull they're going to use. And so that answers all these questions. I've got my knob for the doors and drawers. I've got my drawer guide. I've got my hinge, my leg levelers, suspension blocks. And you could have as many of these sets as you want. And because I've got these, when I say add standard hardware, as long as I start first here and work my way left to right, I've answered all the questions that allow our suggested quantities to be filled in. I can change them. If I know I've got three hinges on that pantry, I might come down here to the hinges and say, well, I don't have 62, I have 63 because I know I have three hinges on, well, maybe 64 because I have three hinges on two doors because it was a pair door on the lower doors. And maybe not, but you see what I'm saying here. You can edit these if you know something's different. These are suggested quantities based off what you've told us so far. You may have two knobs on every drawer front. So you may need to come here and say that this is 24, or you may have two knobs on several drawer fronts. And so you may have to adjust, but it's a suggested quantity based on the typical information, what we know. And it's plenty adequate for an estimate. I don't consider an estimate anything but that. It's an estimate. And if you came back to me after I provided you with an estimate and said, I want exactly what you estimated, I would build it for the price I estimated it at. But if you change things, which always happens between an estimate and proposal, usually you haven't made 100% of the decisions or provided appliance specifications or all the things that can make this vary at the estimate stage. Then we go to accessories. And accessories are just a myriad out of things and basically I've heard multiple custom cabinet estimator clients say you could quote the price of the space shuttle with this thing because all of these things are made up of a material cost an installation labor and a shop labor and you can put anything you want in here name it anything you want you see here most of what we're looking at right now are countertops and so this is a pretty big list if I start scrolling down and maybe that's too big a list to look through so maybe what I want to do is filter that down maybe all I want to look at initially are functional accessories so this list is much shorter now because it's just functional accessories things hood liners and baskets and drawer trays and things like that and then say maybe I want to only want to look at functional accessories that are part of a drawer and now this list is even shorter these are things that are related to a drawer in some way and then I could search by an accessory name and actually say I only want to see the things that include the word tray and now I only see things that include the word tray and maybe I'm looking for this utility tray or cutlery tray or maybe I'm looking for some rollout trays and let's just go ahead and use this one as our example we'll just use that and say we got one pair of those in one cabinet and our trim and molding is much like our hardware we have a suggested quantity up here based on these selections so these selections were made back here on this material tab based on these we have these suggested quantities so if we add the standard crown, it's going to add based on these rounding up that we have 24 linear feet or three pieces of concealed light rail and we have 32 feet or four pieces of crown mold. And so once you get here, theoretically, you're done. You can go to bed tonight and close your eyes and not worry about having missed something because you methodically worked left to right, top to bottom. The last tab is typically just a double check. You typically would not change your installation labor, your shop labor, and your drawer labor job to job. It is what it is, but we do give you the opportunity if you want to check or maybe you have a reason to change your labor for a particular job. So here it is. You can also clear the installation or any of these. So we have the installation separated intentionally. So maybe they don't want you to install their job and you could just clear out the labor rates that quickly. Now you would still have to come back to the trim and molding and the hardware areas and the accessories. So anything that has an installation rate, now this doesn't happen in the field, so it has zero, but anything that has an installation rate like this suspension rail, you're not installing it. So this would either go away or be zeroed out one of the two. You may want to supply it, but maybe not install it. So maybe you would zero that out. So if you change this, you would want to come back to these three tabs and check those things and make sure that you remove any installation cost for those three things. If they come back and say, uh, reconsidered, I don't want to do that, add them right back. Same thing for shop labor. If someone wanted to assemble their cabinets in the field themselves, you could remove the shop labor for all of these pieces here. And then here's your door labor. So if you start at the far left and work your way left to right, 
top to bottom, always left to right once you get there. So we're here, and then we come here, and then we come here. Each time we come into one, we want to check all the tabs. If everything's filled in and there are no green fields, now I know there's this alternating green field, but when you're looking at these entry fields where you have all this stuff, if there are no green fields, then you've covered yourself. And if we pop back here to the job info, we'll see there is one green field here because it's a fixed adjustment, something you would only use every now and then. And maybe if we've left our trip quantity or our mile out something like that in its green it's that double check so if we check that and we checked our rooms now we have a complete estimate and we see we have a running total now I'm going to go ahead and click on this and let it recalculate it's 22,000 and something it recalculates as you go for the most part but some things you add or delete or subtract don't recalculate because it drive you nuts but it was right so $22,498.50 as is if we compare that to our rough estimate back up here a little bit so for our Princess Bride job our low estimate was 12000 and something. Our mid-range price was 16000 and something. And our highest price was $28,500. we are coming in at 24000 but they have a raised panel door instead of an insert panel door. So it would have fallen within what we provided them with originally if they had picked the TW10 door. And we can do that very quickly. We can reprice this job. Now, typically what I would do is duplicate it to give them an alternative price, not change this one. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to come in here and say instead of a CRP10 door, and again, look at this number, 22,498. And let's go down to the TW10 door. Then add that to all the other areas. And then we'll change the drawer front. Let's go ahead and change the drawer front to a slab. Slab wood drawer front. So that quickly we can let it recalculate because again, some of the things will recalculate, but not all things until you click on that number. So now that price is $22,201.28. And that's how quickly you can give them an alternative scenario. You could come through and change this from wiping stain hand glaze to just wiping stain very quickly and get them another price. Again, probably would make sense at this point if I wanted to do that. If you want to duplicate a room, you'd need to come back to here to duplicate the room and then say, okay, this is Castle Dungeon 3 alternative one, alternative two, alternative three, something like that. If you want to give them multiple scenarios of the same room, that's a better choice than sitting down in an office with them and just making changes like I did, just changing that TW10. Now you don't have the original price. You want to kind of keep track, a breadcrumb trail of what you've done. So that's it for this third video tutorial on creating a job. Next we will look at reports in Custom Cabinet Estimator. Thanks for watching.